so we touched on Rona, lucky Rona, in the last um, session. But in this session, she's getting all the attention. Journalist, broadcaster, dating expert, and author of the brilliantly titled The Curious History of Dating, from Jane Austen to Tinder. Nikki Hodgson will tell us about love, dating, pleasure in a time of COVID. Um, I mean, it's got to be the shortest session. No one's dating. No one's having sex. <laughs> Oh, they are, though. They actually are. And what's so fascinating is, obviously, as I learned when I was writing my book, people always have done, no matter how difficult the circumstances. So it doesn't matter whether it's been two world wars, um, time, uh, local wars, times of plague, uh, other kinds of illnesses. People always find a way despite the circumstances. And, you know, actually dating is the ultimate sign of optimism and hope for the future. Yeah. So, you know, I, you've got to love people that are dating. <laughs> are they doing it safely? Like, are we legally, you know, it's all been changed with all these rules and blah, blah, blah. Are we legally allowed to do the deed to make sweet love? Yeah, so sex itself has not been outlawed. I think it's really important to say that. What has been outlawed in some parts of the country, Scotland, for example, is meeting up with other people inside their or your household. That doesn't mean, however, that you can't have sex outside with them or in another location. So it's really a case of um, getting around the law. You don't need to worry about breaking it. Uh, and it's also a matter for your own conscience and what you're comfortable with. Yeah. Yeah. How can you, did you, did you see, <laughs> I don't know who, who was, who, who this came from. It must've been some government department, a little kind of breakdown of what you could and couldn't do sexually. And yes. like you couldn't face and you were supposed to wear masks and blah, blah. What did you think of that? Yeah. Well, I think this actually came from the American government. I don't think it came from the UK yeah. government. Uh, they've been they've been very very quiet about all of this. You can't imagine Jacob Rees Mogg getting on his soapbox, can you, and telling people what they can and can't do in the bedroom? Well, I can't anyway. Well, you've just ruined. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that image. <laughs> Let's move away from it. Let's move away from it. Move away. Move away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, there are some kind of technical. There is some technical advice about what it, what it is best to do and what it is best not to do. So yeah. obviously, COVID isn't an STI, but it can be transmitted. Uh, kind of alongside COVID if you're having sex with somebody. They have found COVID particles in feces and semen. So this means technically you probably should stay away from anal, well, rimming and from uh, blow jobs without condom. If you want to be super, 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 super safe and take all the government advice. How can we, do, how can we even before we get to the stage where we're not with Jacob rees on that couch. I've got that House of Commons image now of him just lying back casually as I straddle. I don't know what I would do. Um, how are we dating? How are people even meeting anyone to have the sex with, have the well, safe sex with? Of course. Well, people are obviously still using dating apps. In fact, the Match Group reported a 15% upturn in users from That's March. Yeah, there was, a da there was a, a downturn in April, which is when lots of the world was locked down, but there has been a gradual increase of users because obviously people have been locked inside with little to do. And what have they got? They've got their phones. So they have actually been on dating apps, liking, swiping, messaging, having phone sex, having video sex. You know, people are still going at it. They're just using technology. Thank God we have technology to its best advantage point. And obviously tech makes it safe. You can't catch COVID through a screen, yeah. at least not at the minute anyway. So yeah. <laughs> Give Rona a month, she'll, she'll find a way. So, you know, in your book, when, you, mm. when we talk about, and there's been dating in, you know, like a time of cholera or, you know, sex and dating and world wars and blah, blah, blah. Has there been a kind of, um, a, a, a kind of mental shift for people coming out of, of, of a crisis time in terms of how they deal with sex? Well, yeah, I mean, we always see an upturn in sex if people are really troubled, people actually have more sex. And if people are celebrating the end of something, they have more sex. So, you know, in the Second World War, when they couldn't have sex inside, they used to favour the wall job. And that was a term that was uh, derived from that time. Somebody actually decided to call it the wall job. So people just literally, you know, got, up, got on it in alleys. And several couples would take one alley as well. There's all the, you always hear those stories about people having sex in, um, in the tube, you know, during a bomb raid, because, you know, well, if I'm going down, I might as well go down having an orgasm. So <laughs> these are, they are just an urban myths. These things are actually true. So, you know, people have made the most of, of a bad time by having sex. And, you know, what's going to get you through better than having yeah. pleasure with somebody else if everything yeah. else is going tits up, so to speak? <laughs> well, that's the worst. That's one of the worst things as well, hasn't it? That um, Not even sex, but just not hugging people and the oxytocin. Is it oxytocin? Oxytocin, absolutely. Yeah. So oxytocin, yeah, oxytocin is a love hormone. 
Yeah, oxytocin is released when you touch somebody, vasopressin as well as another one which um, helps calm you as well as bond you. And dopamine is the chemical we get released when we're in anticipation of someone. So probably lots of us have had quite a lot of dopamine when we've been swiping online and looking at people, yeah. maybe doing some mutual masturbation over the webcam. Yeah. Um, but yeah, oxytocin has been in short supply. So that makes me a little bit sad. But you can still do things like you can still handhold with a new date, even if you um, haven't met them before. Just make sure you wash your hands. And in terms of having sex with somebody new you know one of the things you could do you can't get a test obviously to sort of certify that you're you're okay to have sex with somebody but if you wanted to you could actually self-isolate for 14 days and then that would make sure that you didn't have symptoms so it's a bit of a drastic measure but if you're really yeah. into somebody well what else are you going to do do we have to wear a mask Wearing mask is a really good tip. Wearing mask definitely helps, actually. Um, keeping your heads away from each other, so 69ing has been recommended. Um, if you use the condom on a penis, of course. Uh, something that I recommend is some tight little knickers on the face as a mask. And this is a trick that I used to use when I was a dominatrix. And it was really to kind of punish people that were talking too much and were irritating me and that I didn't really want to look at anymore. So I would just take my knickers off, put it over the head, job done. They were, they were now quiet for a few moments while I thought about what I was going to do next to them. But didn't if it, you... Didn't expect that, <laughs> Nicky. It's, if it's re-smog or it's knickers on your... Uh, okay. Okay, I'm, I'm fine. I'm back. I'm back in the room. But if you, if you have a tight pair of knickers, they've got to be tight, obviously, because that, sure. that would, you know, that's going to protect the, the face area. But you'd be surprised. Even a thong fits quite well as a triangle <laughs> over this area. So at least it's a little bit more sexy than wearing your face mask. So, <laughs> so Love Honey, our lovely Love Honey, conducted a lockdown survey about how, how lockdown has affected couples and, and single people. What did it find? So it found that actually people had been turning to sex to um, deal with their stress. I think it's about 52% of them were having more adventurous sex, which I think is really fascinating. Yeah. So, you know, obviously people have been locked in and they've been bored. And what does boredom create? Well, it creates invention. So, you know, there's something to be said for that. And also lots of people have been managing childcare and really difficult job situations and caring for other people. But then other people have more time on their hands. And again, what's the best thing to fill your extra time with? Sex is what I would say. It certainly cheers you up. Yeah. If people are having um, uh, like FaceTime sex or, you know, online sex with, with, with someone they don't know, mm. how, do they, how do they protect themselves in terms of privacy or, I mean, does that yeah. feel scary? Yeah, so I mean, the, the main thing to do is obviously don't use a work computer. You'd be amazed how many people decide to... <laughs> To decide to go live on a work computer because oh, often they no. use it for everything so they don't really think about what they're doing so there's that um other things like make sure you know that two-step verification that we always skip because we're always too bored to do it actually do it because it secures all your accounts yeah. if you there are apps like signal that you can use that are better than whatsapp um messaging like instant messaging so it's like the new version of snapchat if you want to use it that way so you can set the messages to di disappear after a second so if you're okay. if you're sexting sending sexy selfies that's actually a really good way of doing it so yeah and the other thing of course is don't send a picture of your head and your body to someone that you don't know do one or the other because then yeah. you can always excuse the other body yeah. part yeah say <laughs> so it was jacob very smart but nothing to do with me <laughs> um also the the survey found i thought this was was great 42 percent of respondents are using sex toys more frequently yes yes and of course sex toys are absolutely fantastic right now because um you know they give if you're not with a partner then obviously you can use them separately and use tech to communicate what you're doing. You could talk on the phone and tell somebody, right, I want you to put the vibrator here, there, wherever. So you can kind of play a game with it. Um, you know, the really important thing to do is to clean your sex toys really well. And if you're starting with a new partner, then it actually is a really nice idea to buy them a brand new sex toy altogether. Then they know yeah. it's completely clean, completely safe. And yeah. it's a beautiful gift to give someone. So how do you clean them properly then? Give us that, that ultimate advice. You can just do it with actually hot, um, hot water and soap that actually gets rid of the majority of the bacteria. Um, and, you know, increasingly they're made of body safe materials like things like silicone, which are washable. You can also yeah. put your sex toys in the dishwasher. You do need to check the box first, but you, that actually is very standard practice. And obviously it gets to a really high temperature and you don't have to worry about uh, leaving them out on the side. I used to, when I was a dominatrix, hand wash all my dildos and then like do a row of them on the sink. But then I would forget that my housemate would come home and then they'd all just be like stood up there <laughs> stood to attention so don't do that, <laughs> don't do that. how long um, were you a dominatrix for um on and off about five years I, I only ever did it part-time so it was only a couple of hours a week 
and it was always around my writing and my interning. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was it was a nice little earner, and it gave me a wealth of knowledge, which I put to very good use since. What's your most memorable moment from that time? <laughs> Um, oh my gosh, there are, there are so many, loads that I can't repeat actually because it might freak some people out. But probably, probably one of the best was a client that had a fantasy for being eaten. Like he wanted, he wanted to imagine that someone might eat him because they loved him so much. So he would ask for himself to be kind of tied and trussed up like a spring lamb and then have mint sauce put on him extremely strange <laughs> but no fantasy is too strange that was the point it was a safe it fantasy thing, yeah. and it was his thing so why wouldn't I honor it that's kind of what I always so, say I know yeah. it sounds peculiar but wasn't doing anybody any harm yeah yeah are you a vegan no I'm not okay. I wish I was I should be one <laughs> <laughs> so sex toys I hear you've had um, a special delivery I have I'm really excited because I was worried that somebody else had poached them earlier but they have <laughs> actually arrived now uh -huh. um, do you want me to share, you, share yes, with you what please. I've got yes please okay wonderful so I don't know where to start first I've got so many options right shall I, shall I, I haven't unboxed them yet do you want me to unbox them do it okay, oh this, this is, is like exciting. joining in your Christmas this is like proper Christmas so this is the app controlled love egg okay cool box. Oh my god, this is where I need long nails to get into the <laughs> Sorry guys, it's gonna be stupid. So boring. so anyone could um control that then, not necessarily you. Yeah, that's the whole point. It's even better to give the app uh, the you know, give the app control to somebody else because then they can mm. kind of play games with you, torch you, you know, take as long as they want, to titillate you, etc. etc. Oh, I think we've just ripped this open, baby. I'm gonna go for it. What if someone put an, a love egg, so you had a love egg a vibrator up you and then they went to the pub mm. and they forgot that they kind of switched you on? Well, I guess that you'd have to take it out, wouldn't you? Unless you want to have <laughs> the mother of all evenings. Because <laughs> it would go on for a very long time. Um, I don't even know if it's got a little power in it. Let's see. Yeah, so this is wonderful. It's like, you can see, it's like a, re it's, it's really... You know, it's not large. It's like extremely smooth. Like it feels beautiful. It's like really, really silky. Um, it's I love that color. Yeah, the color's gorgeous. Um, and it's elegant. Like, I mean, is it a kitchen utensil? Is it a sex toy? It's objet d'art, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. You can leave it out and no one's going to worry about it. But yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's so cool. That's Show really me nice. quickly. Oh, it's, it's all about knickers with you. That's your, that's your theme. So there's, <laughs> you've got um, a, lux a Desire Luxury App Controlled Rechargeable Knicker Vibrator. Yes, I have. I'm just going to rip into it because I will be using it. So I know you will. We don't need to worry about the boxing. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's nice to get elegant with it. There's <laughs> no, no point where lust is involved. Get on with it. Also, they come in these really nice little pouches. Oh, so again, nice. like just another... And they like so white clean. It's like another easy thing that you can kind of keep hold of. Um, oh, where is it? Where is it? Let's have a look. Oh, here it is. A knicker vibrator. A knicker vibrator. So you don't need anybody for this. It's no. purely some extreme self-love organs up. Look at this. It's the perfect shape. Again, it's that great colour. It's that lovely, lovely texture. And that oh, will literally yeah. just sit. You can see where that sits. It's really, really straight, straightforward to use. Um, again, you've got a, like a discreet little button here to press to open it. And then it's actually got a nice little ridge here. You can't really see, but that just fits beautifully inside. It's going to stimulate the whole area. So, you know, super simple, chic looking, and mm. yeah, just a brilliant night in for yourself. And total hands-free. So you totally can do whatever else you want to do. Exactly. So... <laughs> puppet shows. I know you love a puppet show. <laughs> Whatever you <laughs> want to do. Um, <laughs> give me, I've got, I've got some questions for you. Give me, finally, right now, I guess, the three top tips on dating successfully during this crazy time, unprecedented time that we're in. Mm, right. Okay. So the main things that I would say is just because we're in the middle of a pandemic, don't go for people that you wouldn't have gone for before. You're not desperate. And eventually you're going to spend a substantial amount of time if it goes well with this person and you need to still make a good choice. So yes. if somebody is moving really fast and putting pressure on you to kind of see you and hang out with you and, you know, maybe even thinking about spending a second lockdown with you, perish the thought if we get to one, you don't have to go at that pace. You know, take your time because sometimes people just panic in these kinds mm. of situations and think, I've got to find myself somebody, you know, I'm going to go for the next person that's really lovely to me. So we don't want you to be victim to that person. So be, be careful about the timing. Go as slow as you would normally is my first tip. Um, second tip, don't lose your life to swiping, even though your boss isn't kind of watching what you're doing at your desk all the time anymore because you're working from home, presumably. Um, <laughs> instead, only swipe between five and nine times a day, um, or at least between, um, 
until you've worked through those options. That is actually uh, science from Dr. Helen Fisher, who's the world's leading anthropologist um, on dating and she works for Match.com. That's her advice. And she says that's because at past five to nine swipes, we get cognitive overload and we make poorer decisions for ourselves. So you think you, you're, you know, your taste is improving or you're being more selective. It's that's not. Mad. Yeah, it's really, really fascinating. The brain isn't meant to process loads and loads and loads of options. And that's what modern dating tries to sell us, but it's not actually true. So, you know, be selective. It's quality over quantity. I love this. I'm going to make you, I'm going to make you take me dating. <laughs> D- uh, um, advise me. Can I um, ask you some questions, please? Please, please do. Let's see what we've got here. Okay. Um, how common, this is some of uh, an anonymous attendee, how common would you say it's for people, women, to have a lower frequency sex drive? There's a lot of talk, which makes it seem like everyone's, <laughs> everyone's being a bunny all the time. Gosh, that's, a, that's quite a complex question to answer. Um, I think what's fair to say is that everybody of any gender, of any age, can have a completely different sex drive to a, a similar person. So, you know, there are so obvious, obviously there are hormonal things that come into play during the course of your lifetime that will affect your sex drive. But, and there'll be other health issues, mental health issues, like depending on your stress factors, there are all yeah. these kinds of things that can affect the, the, your personal sex drive. But your sex drive is personal to you, uh, but it's not static. So it's going to change over the course of your lifetime. So I'm, I'm kind of like getting around the question in a way, but what I'm trying to say is that it's really difficult to say, there's X amount of sex that you should want a day and anything below that is failing. It doesn't work like that. The amount of sex that's right is the amount of sex where you feel satisfied for you. And that yeah. if that's once a month, then that's once a month and that's yeah. fine. And I guess if, it, if it's really vacillating or fluctuating so much that you're not happy with that, then you explore that. But it's, it's completely you, you're, the, you're the level that you go You're from. the barometer and it's yeah. got to be about your, your happiness. That's the issue. Yeah. It's not really to do with the amount. Yeah, there's a great question from our fabulous uh, Love Honey sex expert, resident sex expert, Annabelle Knight. Um, she'd like to ask you, so she says, I love seeing people glow when they talk about the best bits, most enjoyable, most fulfilling parts of their jobs. And, and you're obviously doing that. Which, which is, <laughs> what's the most fulfilling part of your job, would you say? My by far, as someone that's worked as a Silicon Valley dating coach and a a consultant for various apps is helping people find a person that they really love. And you know, it's happened, it's happened several times. I used to work for the inner circle and we had a baby wall there. And if ever we got to the point where, and it did happen quite frequently, you know, by the time that I'd been there a couple of years, we we had a sizable baby wall and engagement wall. By the time you get that email from the person that just says, thank you so much, you know, for basically changing my life and giving them the greatest gift, which is love in a way. Well, I'm getting a bit egotistical about it. It's not me doing it, is it? I'm just doing the introduction. (laughs) But yeah, being involved in that process, there's nothing I'd rather do on earth, honestly. Isn't that brilliant? Um, this is from Natalie. What's your favourite sex toy? Ooh, that is a really good question. What is my favourite sex toy? Um, I love a paddle because obviously harking back to my old Dom days, mm-hmm. the paddle is just so versatile. You know, you can stroke somebody with it if it's kind of velvet and leather and different fabrics on either side. You can threaten somebody with it. <laughs> you, can, you can obviously give them a really erotic spanking. And an erotic spanking, for the record, is something where you start really slow and you build up the heat. So you don't, you're not, the aim isn't to kind of terrify someone or really shock them. It's to kind of build up the heat because with the heat comes the endorphins, comes the pleasure in that whole genital region. So that's the trick to a good spanking. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's a slow art, and I was taught it by another dominatrix, and then I passed my craft on to other people. That's <laughs> so, so interesting because you'd always kind of think it's, it's either there was like a an influential. Well, back to Jacob Rees Mogg, there was like an influential <laughs> nanny at the beginning of life, so your you know your fantasies are kind of linked to the first time you were aroused, or it's just, it's you know whatever you get off, or if you you know like corporal punishment. Sure. It's but, an actual endorphin. Yeah, well, there, I mean there is a psychological component to it, but in terms of, in BDSM in general, the reason people like being hit, apart from if they have a kind of fantasy about it is because you're getting a rush of endorphins. So it's the endorphins that would rush to save your body if you were getting, you know, actually injured, but you get them anyway. So actually it's all about kind of, it's basically sexual extreme sport. It's no different to doing something like snowboarding or skiing, I'd say. So it's it's a bit of a better way to think about it. Have you been banned from snowboarding resorts? <laughs> I am absolutely appalling. Like I, to say that I used to be a dominatrix, you would have no clue that I'm absolutely terrified on a pair of skis or snowboard. So <laughs> something doesn't carry over, unfortunately. Here's another question, um, an, an anonymous attendee. Um, I'm single and wondering how I can date as we move out of COVID. How do you see dating changing post-COVID? It's a brilliant question. 
That's a really good question. I think, well, I actually think people are taking dating more seriously. So I think the amount of time wasters that we had on dating apps is actually dwindling because I think a lot of people have kind of got their emotional house in order. They've sort of said, actually, what matters? Well, to me, I do want to find somebody. I would like a partnership, you know, of whatever kind of length or type that is, uh, you know, with which, whatever gender. So I think, I think we'll see more people being more serious. I think we're going to see a slight uptick in people moving in together and a slight uptick in marriages. We're obviously going to have a marriage boom next year, but that's really all the weddings that were uh, cancelled this year carrying over. But I think over the next couple of years, we're going to see more and more relationships so I think it's actually a really really good time to meet someone um, in terms of what you should be doing in a kind of COVID dynamic it's really just about looking after your health really watching to see if you have symptoms otherwise you know go ahead don't put your life on hold because of this virus there's another brilliant answer there's another um a question from an anonymous attendee i'm in a fairly new relationship and because of covid i'm unable to, unable to see him at the moment how do you advise we introduce toys from a distance oh wonderful one this is the perfectly placed uh, so you know you kind of obviously want to spend time with each other kind of uh, you know separated by by covid the best thing to do is if is buy i would recommend if you both know that you want to introduce toys go and buy a toy for each other and then maybe kind of the way to introduce it because you're going to have to use it um, on yourself but online obviously mm -hmm. is to kind of sext about it and sort of describe what you've got and what you're going to do to yourself and what you would do to them and what you, you'll do to them eventually when you get to, to actually put it on them or the other thing you could do is buy it for them and send it to their house so they get your purchase and then they have to pledge themselves with the things that you choose for them so that's a really good way of it being a bit more personal and then, you know, obviously just set up a really good um, Skype session or whatever <laughs> video platform you use uh, and make sure you're not on your work computer, obviously. And, and you honestly, know, where that you cracks go. me up the thought of someone doing that. It's just too brilliant. <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> it's just hilarious. <laughs> What's wrong with people? I know. It's just, it's just habit. It's just habit. All the boundaries are blurred around our lives and yeah. people just forget where stuff belongs. Yeah. Do you know what, I, my favourite kind of, um, there's, there's one more, more question, but I could say this, my favourite thing that people have said about uh, the virus, and, and, you know, and it's hideous, it's just, it, it's an awful thing, of course, for everyone affected, and we're all affected in, in many different ways, is that it's kind of a reset. Sure. And I kind of, that's a kind of nice positive to get from it. And I guess it is in, in um, kind of relationships, love, dating and sex as well. Yeah, I mean, it absolutely is. It's a chance to change any of your patterns that you've had before. You know, mm. you don't have to go to a therapist to change your behavior in relationships. You can do some self-reflection. And it also, there's something about having to be uh, maybe a little bit uh, chased for a while that can be really good as a kind of cleanse to like figure out what you're going to be doing going forward, what kind of sex you would really like to have, what kind of person you would really like to have it with. Mm -hmm. So there's something to be said for having some, that kind of time out imposed on us, you know, because yeah. some of, some people are quite compulsive around sex and might have had, you know, times where it's very easy with the kind of dating app culture that we have to find another date every single night or multiple dates in an evening and go to bed with somebody different every single time. And, you know, obviously the COVID advice is that we need to limit contact with people or be choosy about who we give it our, con our time with. And so actually by taking that time out and taking stock a little bit, you're actually doing the right thing by COVID and doing a good thing for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Here's uh, two final questions. So I mean, you've kind of answered this, but maybe specifically because it's FaceTime, but, um, and another anonymous attendee asks, what's the best toys for FaceTime sex? Best toys for FaceTime sex? Okay, yeah. well, something that you can see, this is going to sound really strange, but obviously some toys are more discreet looking than others. And for maximum effect to, the, to arouse the other person that's on the call with you, you want something that's kind of discernibly what it is you know, what it makes out to be. Yeah. So for example, a, a really good vibrator that you can see the length and the girth and the shape of is gonna be really good to watch on a camera. Um, a male masturbator, again, is a pretty good toy because it's like really obvious what it is. Um, so that is what I would say, go for things that have a really good outline shape because you're not gonna be able to see the detail on a video call. Yeah, it's really like practical. <laughs> is it? Well, it's what porn does, you know. Everything in porn is about the outlines of things. So you've got to apply that kind of principle. What would show up in a porn film? What will show up in your, um, your call? Yeah, yeah, so funny. Do we have to have the music? Do we have to do the 70s music? <laughs> I would so, avoid yeah. the 70s music so, at, all, so, yeah. at all costs. So here's a question. Um, 
Set Jarvis, I hope I've pronounced your name correctly. Um, I'm in a polyamorous relationship and we've been finding it really difficult during COVID, especially that we have to keep our relationship secret from family members, etc. Ket, sorry, Ket. Um, how would you advise us to have sex safely during COVID? Yeah, again, it's a really, really tricky one. And especially if you're polyamorous and I'm presuming there's multiple partners, so you're probably going to have to choose about how, how many people you have in your bubble and this rule of six nonsense does come yeah. into play. Um, so yeah, that must be actually quite stressful if you're trying to juggle that with uh, family demands as well. I think the most important thing to do is there are some basic physical principles. So things like having a shower before sex, um, you know, hand washing before you're holding hands with somebody, do wear a mask, especially if it's someone new, if you can bear it or the knickers. Um, avoid avoid rimming um if you're doing a blow job use a condom um do lots of if if you're a female get all your pleasure get all your cunnilingus because that's not covid uh dangerous in any way shape or form unless your head's too close to somebody of course um and i think the main thing is to really rely on, rely on tech because that's where you're going to have the most pleasure get some sex toys treat each other to nice things get some lingerie if that's what you like to kind of show each other and you know get back to words get really good at sexting get really good at phone sex get really good at video sex these things are all free as well and um, apart from your internet connection so you know in the in the six months that we the long winter that we've got ahead <laughs> these things are going to keep you warm so the um so the eat out to help out eat out exactly eat out exactly. to help out is a brilliant slogan and somebody else should have put that on a t-shirt with a picture i'm sure somebody's probably done it right i mean love honey can have that one love honey come can on have love honey look at nikki. <laughs> um nikki what's next for you what is next for me well i am writing a new book about sex and mental health are you? Um, yes, I am. It's a bit of a kind of secret and beginning project at the minute. So I haven't really, yeah, I'm not really in a position to tell you any more about it. But if you yeah. watch my Instagram, I'm going to start teasing about it over the next few months. So yeah, um, that is the thing that I will be on. And also I have a brilliant podcast called Bisexual Brunch, which is out now. Um, I present that with two co-hosts. We're all bisexual. They're two bisexual guys. I'm bisexual girl. And we just go to town. Originally, we were going to be literally having brunch with each other. So we don't get to do the brunch part, <laughs> but we do record it at all times of the day, sometimes at yeah. brunch. And we get some brilliant people on, you know, we, 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 get, we talk to actors, we're talking to celebrities, we're talking to academics, all kinds of people, all about what it is to be bi in the 21st century. And was it just by Visibility Week? So it was that. just and it was uh by visibility day yesterday it's still the week now because i'm doing something the british library tomorrow yeah. all about being bi um so yeah it's a it's a great week to be bi there's loads going on there's loads of conversations there's loads of brilliant free events online uh it's a really good chance to check in with yourself see how you're feeling about your identity and just celebrate who you are yeah have you read any of those books behind you i've read all of them actually a load of them are mine <laughs> the spanish and italian versions of my book so I was trying to teach myself languages by reading my own book. Again, extreme, ridic ridiculous project, really. But I just learned this way. I just learned the kind of words for private parts out of them. I because, bet you, you do. Know, that I was the most useful do. thing to do. What's, what's the worst word you've heard um, for a private part? Am I allowed mean, to say it? Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. I, well, not if it's naughty. I'll tell you mine. So my, Go on, you tell me. I'll, I'll gauge your tone if you tell me Okay, yours. yeah, yeah, it's lovely. My um, friend had a, a daughter, and when the daughter was a certain age, the daughter wanted to know what to call bits, and my friend didn't want to call it what it is. So she obviously gave it this name, and the reason we found out what this name was was her daughter, and I don't think it was a Christmas, was one day standing in front of us, and she went, Mummy, do you like my legs? Mummy, do you like my knees? Mummy, do you like my thighs? Mummy, do you like my satsuma? <laughs> That's Christmas ruined. Well, that will, but then again, on the other hand, it's a good code word and, you know, it's not going to get you in trouble in the playground, probably. Um, probably. Well, actually, this is, this is interesting. When I was little, all the children in the hospital, regardless of their gender, um, the nurses said they had a tail. So what? I was, I was brought up with the word tail for my vagina when I was, my vulva, when I was a little girl. And it, <laughs> it's really strange when I think about it and I'm definitely not teaching my children it. That's so but at least it was at least it was gender neutral. I mean, I guess I guess it was like <laughs> yeah. equivalent. So at least yeah. there was that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's stick with that. Um, it's been so lovely chatting with you. Lovely to meet Likewise. you. Um, Likewise. Likewise, baby. Good luck with your book. It sounds amazing. Um, thank you. And, and have fun with your Love Honey products. Um, okay. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, Nikki, we have such great guests. We're so lucky. Mm -hmm.